Does voltage shock you? Signs around power plants and breaker boxes often state, caution, high voltage area. It is not voltage that can hurt you, it is the electrical current that flows through your body that can produce serious and sometimes fatal consequences. The Van de Graaff generator creates hundreds of thousands of volts but produces such a low amount of current that the sparks it emits only cause muscles to tingle. What were uses of the Leiden jar? In the late 18th and 19th centuries, people attempted to use the Leiden jar in a variety of ways. Some felt that it could cure medical ailments. And many doctors used the jar as primitive electroshock therapy. Others used it as a demonstration device and for entertainment purposes. Still more people felt that it could be used in cooking. Try cooking a turkey with an electrical spark. Many outlets have three holes. What is the purpose of each hole? Outlets have two slots, one longer than the other, and a D-shaped hole. The contacts in the shorter slot are connected to a black wire. This is the hot connection that carries the 120 volts. The contacts in the longer slot are connected to a white wire, called the neutral wire. The white wire is connected to ground in the electric distribution box. Thus there is a potential difference of 120 volts across the two contacts. The third hole is attached to a green wire that is at ground potential. When was magnetism discovered? The discovery of rocks that attracted certain metals is lost to history. As was the case with electrostatics, Aristotle, 384 to 322 BCE, credited Thales of Miletus, 625 to 545 BCE, with the first scientific discussion of the attractive power of the rock later called lodestone. The word magnet comes from the region of Greece where lodestone is found. But the power of lodestone was found by other people around the same time. At the time of Thales' life an Indian surgeon, Sushreta, used magnets to aid surgery. In the 4th century. BCE the Chinese book of the Devil Valley Master says lodestone makes iron come. In the 11th century. CE the Chinese scientist Chen Kuo wrote about the use of a magnetized needle as a compass in navigation. By the next century the Chinese were known to use a lodestone as a shipboard compass. One hundred years later the British theologian, Alexander Neckham, described the compass and how it could be used to aid navigation. Some people thought that the pole star attracted the compass. While others thought that the source was a magnetic island near the North Pole. 
In 1269 the Frenchman Petrus Peregrinus wrote a detailed paper on the properties of magnets. But the most comprehensive and famous work was written by William Gilbert in 1600. Gilbert concluded that Earth was a giant magnet. What is an electroscope? An electroscope is a device used to measure the charge on an object. It consists of two metal leaves, either thin aluminum foil or gold leaf, attached to a metal rod. If you touch a charged object to the metal rod the two leaves will be charged with like charges. And so they will repel each other. The larger the charge, the greater the angle will be between the leaves. How much resistance do our bodies have to electrical current? On average, the human body has an electrical resistance between 50,000 and 150. 000 ohms. Most of this resistance is across the skin. If the skin is wet the resistance drops to about 1000 ohms. If the skin is broken, then resistance across organs in the body is on the order of a few hundred ohms. In this condition 10 volts is sufficient to cause serious, if not fatal damage. What is a magnetic field? Just as the gravitational field is the region around a massive object that causes the attractive force on another object with mass. A magnetic field is the region around a magnet that causes forces on magnetic materials or other magnets. Why do electricians work with one hand behind their back? When working on high voltage circuitry, many electricians like to place one hand behind their back because this way there is little chance for each hand to touch objects of different electrical potentials and cause a shock. What is Coulomb's law? Coulomb's law describes the strength of the electrical force between two charged objects. The formula is F equals K, GQ2 slash R2. Where K is a constant equal to 9.0 x 109 nm2 slash C2, Newton meters squared per Coulomb squared. The charges Q1 and Q2, measured in Coulombs, represent the charges on the objects that cause the force F, measured in Newtons. Finally, R is the distance between the centers of the two charged objects. A negative force is an attractive force, while a positive force is repulsive. What is the Leyden jar?
water can be stored in a jar. Why is a 100 watt bulb brighter than a 25 watt bulb? A light bulb transforms electric energy first into the thermal energy of the heated filament and then into light and heat. The rate at which these energy changes occur is determined by the way the bulb is constructed. The 100 watt bulb has a lower resistance filament the thin wire in the bulb that gets hot. Assuming that both bulbs are connected to a 120 volt outlet. There will be more current through the 100 watt bulb than the 25 watt bulb. Lower resistance is created by making the filament out of thicker wire. The lower resistance means higher current, which in turn means higher power and more light and heat output. What is the modern day version of a Leiden jar? The capacitor is the modern version of the Leiden jar. Like the jar, it consists of two conductors separated by an insulator. The insulators used can be air, a thin plastic film, or a coating of oxide on the metallic surface. One use of a capacitor is to store the energy needed to fire a flash lamp on a camera. A battery powered circuit slowly charges the capacitor. When the flash lamp is triggered the capacitor's energy is quickly transferred to the lamp. Creating a brief, intense flash of light. Capacitors are also used in electronic devices from telephones. To televisions to store energy and reduce changes in voltage. What if the tool or appliance has a three-prong plug but you have only two slot outlets? Do not use the appliance if you do not have the proper outlet for the device. Cutting off the grounding prong will defeat the safety feature of the separate ground wire. Why don't birds or squirrels on power lines get electrocuted? In order to get electrocuted on a bare wire, a bird would have to be in contact with objects that had two different voltages. The difference in voltage along the wire over the distance between the animal's feet is very small. The animal would be in danger only if it made contact with both a high voltage wire and the ground or a wire connected to ground, low voltage. Then there could be a large current through its body. What is needed to create a circuit? A circuit is a circular path through which charge can flow. So, the first requirement is a complete, unbroken conducting path. Second, there must be a source of potential difference most often a battery. 
the battery provides the voltage that will produce the current in the circuit. With only a battery and wire connecting the two ends of the battery the resistance in the circuit will be almost zero. And the amount of current will be very high. This situation is called a short circuit. The wire will become hot enough to burn you. So, for a useful circuit there must be a third element a device with resistance. This may be a resistor, lamp, motor, etc. In terms of energy. The energy input to the circuit is the chemical energy stored in the battery. When the circuit is complete, the chemical energy becomes electrical energy in the wires. That energy is then converted to thermal energy in the resistor or lamp, or kinetic energy in the motor. The hot resistor or lamp then radiates heat and light into the environment. In our households the battery is replaced by the electric. Generating station operated by the utility company. It may use the chemical energy in fossil fuels such as coal, oil, or natural gas to boil water, i.e. produce thermal energy. The steam from the boiling water then turns the generator. Converting the energy to rotational kinetic energy. The generator then converts this energy of rotation into the electrical energy that is transmitted to the home. A nuclear power plant uses the nuclear energy in the nucleus of the uranium atoms to heat the water and produce steam. From that point on the nuclear and fossil fuel power plants are essentially the same. What causes materials to be attracted to magnets? The ultimate cause of magnetism is electrons. When electrons are in a magnetic field the forces they experience cause them to move in tiny circles. The circling electrons create their own magnetic fields that give rise to diamagnetism. Electrons are tiny magnets themselves, with north and south poles. In most atoms these magnets are paired so their fields cancel. But, if there are an odd number of electrons, the unpaired electron produces a paramagnet. Oxygen, for example, is paramagnetic. In ferromagnets the unpaired electrons in large groups of atoms interact with each other so that they point in the same direction. This group is called a domain. When a ferromagnet is put in a magnetic field the domains can line up with their poles facing the same direction, making the material a magnet. In most materials when the magnetic field is removed the domains revert to their former random directions and the material is no longer a magnet. For certain alloys, however, the domains remain aligned, resulting in a permanent magnet. How is the strength of an electrical force measured? British philosopher, theologian, and scientist Joseph Priestley, 1733-1804 suggested that the force caused by static electricity might depend on distance the same way gravity does. 
Using Priestley's idea, the French physicist Charles Coulomb, 1736-1806, made quantitative measurements of the force of attraction and repulsion between charged objects using an apparatus shown in the accompanying illustration. He found that the force depended on the charge of the two objects and the distance between them. The relationship he found is called Coulomb's law and the unit of measurement of charge as the Coulomb, c. What is the difference between a kilowatt and a kilowatt hour? A kilowatt, 1000 watts, is the unit used to describe the power. The rate at which the energy is being converted. Energy is the power multiplied by the time it is used, in this case hours. Therefore a kilowatt hour, the product of power and time, is a unit of energy. The utility company charges you for the number of kilowatt hours of electricity you use in a month. For example, a 100 watt light bulb uses 100 watts, or 0.1 kilowatt, of power. If that light bulb were left on for an entire month, the energy that the bulb consumed would be 0.1 kilowatts x 24 hours slash days x 30 days slash month, which equals 72 kilowatt hours slash month. If the energy cost is 12 cents per kilowatt hour, the bill for that one light bulb would be $8.64 per month. Replacing the 100 watt incandescent lamp with a 23 watt compact. Fluorescent lamp that is equally bright would cost only $1.98 per month. An LED lamp equally bright has a power rating of only 13 watts, and therefore would cost $1.12 to light. What materials are attracted to magnets? Iron, nickel, and cobalt and most of their alloys are attracted to magnets. Other metals, like silver and gold, copper, tin, stainless steel, zinc. Brass and bronze are not attracted. Nonmetals are not attracted. Iron, nickel, and cobalt are called ferromagnetic. All materials respond to magnetic fields, but most respond so weakly that the forces are hardly felt. Those that are repelled are called diamagnetic, those attracted are paramagnetic. How are refrigerator magnets made? Examine a refrigerator magnet. It is flexible, feels like rubber, and only one surface is attracted to metals. It doesn't stick to a stainless steel door unless the stainless has been coated with steel. It's made of rubber that has been impregnated with ferrite particles and magnetized. Small pieces, each a dipole, are then pressed together under heat to bond them into one thin sheet that can be cut, folded, and bonded to other sheets. How are refrigerator magnets made?
Examine a refrigerator magnet. It is flexible, feels like rubber, and only one surface is attracted to metals. It doesn't stick to a stainless steel door unless the stainless has been coated with steel. It's made of rubber that has been impregnated with ferrite particles and magnetized. Small pieces, each a dipole, are then pressed together under heat to bond. Them into one thin sheet that can be cut, folded, and bonded to other sheets. Which of the three arrangements shown below would have the properties of a refrigerator magnet as described above? The top two wouldn't because both surfaces would act as a magnet. The top right hand arrangement would be a very weak magnet on both faces. Because the alternating poles would essentially cancel each other out. In the third drawing the sheets have been folded and then pressed together so that the poles are at only one surface. So only that surface would act like a magnet. The alternating N and S poles attract steel and stick to it. You can check this idea by taking two refrigerator magnets and holding the magnetic surfaces together. And then try sliding one over the other. You'll find that they skip as first N and S poles touch each other and attract. Then the like poles try to touch each other but repel, making the magnets skip. Which of the three arrangements shown below would have the properties of a refrigerator magnet as described above? The top two wouldn't because both surfaces would act as a magnet. The top right hand arrangement would be a very weak magnet on both faces. Because the alternating poles would essentially cancel each other out. In the third drawing the sheets have been folded and then pressed together so that the poles are at only one surface. So only that surface would act like a magnet. The alternating N and S poles attract steel and stick to it. You can check this idea by taking two refrigerator magnets and holding the magnetic surfaces together. And then try sliding one over the other. You'll find that they skip as first N and S poles touch each other and attract. Then the like poles try to touch each other but repel, making the magnets skip. What happens when a magnet is cut in two pieces? When a magnet is cut the atoms within the domains remain aligned. In almost every case the cut would be between two domains, leaving aligned domains in the two halves. If you cut a domain you would create two smaller domains, each with a north pole and a south pole. So no matter where you cut the result is two magnets, each with its own north and south pole. The more domains, the stronger the magnet. What happens when a magnet is cut in two pieces?
when a magnet is cut the atoms within the domains remain aligned. In almost every case the cut would be between two domains, leaving aligned domains in the two halves. If you cut a domain you would create two smaller domains, each with a north pole and a south pole. So no matter where you cut the result is two magnets, each with its own north and south pole. The more domains, the stronger the magnet. How is Earth's magnetic field oriented? Because opposite poles attract. The north pole of a hanging magnet or compass must point toward a south pole. So, the south pole of Earth's magnet must be near the north geographic pole. The poles are actually far below Earth's surface, so Earth's field is not parallel to its surface. How is Earth's magnetic field oriented? Because opposite poles attract. The north pole of a hanging magnet or compass must point toward a south pole. So, the south pole of Earth's magnet must be near the north geographic pole. The poles are actually far below Earth's surface, so Earth's field is not parallel to its surface. What is the origin of Earth's magnetic field? The source of Earth's magnetic field is its core, made of iron, so hot that it is molten. It rotates at a slightly different rate than does Earth. And this difference creates what is called a dynamo effect, generating a magnetic field. Details of how the dynamo effect works are still a matter that is under investigation. What is the origin of Earth's magnetic field? The source of Earth's magnetic field is its core, made of iron, so hot that it is molten. It rotates at a slightly different rate than does Earth. And this difference creates what is called a dynamo effect generating a magnetic field. Details of how the dynamo effect works are still a matter that is under investigation. What is magnetic declination? Magnetic declination is the angular difference between north as shown by a compass and the direction to the geographic north pole, Earth's axis of rotation. Declination depends primarily on the location on Earth but, because the magnetic poles move, also on time. What is magnetic declination? Magnetic declination is the angular difference between north as shown by a 
compass and the direction to the geographic North Pole, Earth's axis of rotation. Declination depends primarily on the location on Earth but, because the magnetic poles move, also on time. How is a compass made? A compass is a magnetized metallic pointer that can rotate about a low friction pivot point. Sometimes the pointer is placed in a container of liquid to dampen the movement of the pointer. The magnetic pointer aligns itself with the north-slash-south orientation of Earth's magnetic field. And the person using the compass can determine what direction he or she is headed by looking at the pointer. How is a compass made? A compass is a magnetized metallic pointer that can rotate about a low friction pivot point. Sometimes the pointer is placed in a container of liquid to dampen the movement of the pointer. The magnetic pointer aligns itself with the north-slash-south orientation of Earth's magnetic field. And the person using the compass can determine what direction he or she is headed by looking at the pointer. Does a compass sometimes point downward along with pointing north? For hundreds of years, navigators using compasses noticed that on occasion. The compass pointer would try to point downward in addition to pointing north. This phenomenon, which went unexplained for several hundred years, was observed by compass maker Robert Norman. He found when flying over the poles one end of the compass would point downward. He understood that the problem was that the pointer was attracted to the pole under the plane. By making the compass rotate in the vertical direction he made the first dip needle. Does a compass sometimes point downward along with pointing north? For hundreds of years, navigators using compasses noticed that on occasion. The compass pointer would try to point downward in addition to pointing north. This phenomenon which went unexplained for several hundred years. Was observed by compass maker Robert Norman. He found when flying over the poles one end of the compass would point downward. He understood that the problem was that the pointer was attracted to the pole under the plane. By making the compass rotate in the vertical direction he made the first dip needle. What is a dip needle and how is it similar to a compass? A dip needle is just like a conventional compass. But instead of holding it horizontally, it is held vertically. It is a magnetic needle used for navigational purposes just like a compass but is used predominantly when traveling around the North and South Poles. 
Instead of measuring horizontal magnetic deflection, the dip needle measures vertical magnetic inclination. When over the equator, the magnetic field of Earth is parallel to the surface of the Earth. The closer one gets to the magnetic poles, however, the less pilots rely on compasses. And the more they rely on dip needles to tell them how close they are to the poles. The closer one gets to a pole, the more vertical the magnetic field becomes. Because it's turning into the surface of Earth. Therefore, when directly over the magnetic poles, the dip needle points directly downward. What is a dip needle and how is it similar to a compass? A dip needle is just like a conventional compass. But instead of holding it horizontally, it is held vertically. It is a magnetic needle used for navigational purposes just like a compass. But is used predominantly when traveling around the North and South Poles. Instead of measuring horizontal magnetic deflection, the dip needle measures vertical magnetic inclination. When over the equator, the magnetic field of Earth is parallel to the surface of the Earth. The closer one gets to the magnetic poles, however, the less pilots rely on compasses. And the more they rely on dip needles to tell them how close they are to the poles. The closer one gets to a pole, the more vertical the magnetic field becomes. Because it's turning into the surface of Earth. Therefore, when directly over the magnetic poles, the dip needle points directly downward. How was the connection between electricity and magnetism discovered? The close connection between electric current and magnetic fields was discovered quite by accident. In 1820, Danish physicist Hans Christian Ørsted, 1777-1851, gave a lecture on the heating effects of an electric current on a wire. A compass happened to be near the wire and he was surprised to see the compass rotate when the current was on. He had been looking for connections between electricity and magnetism for several years, but expected that the compass would point away from the wire. Instead he found that the compass pointed in a circle around the wire. Above the wire it pointed perpendicular to the wire. Below the wire it also pointed in the perpendicular, but in the opposite direction. How was the connection between electricity and magnetism discovered? The close connection between electric current and magnetic fields was discovered quite by accident. In 1820, Danish physicist Hans Christian Ørsted, 1777-1851, gave a lecture on the heating effects of an electric current on a wire. A compass happened to be near the wire and he was surprised to see the compass rotate when the current was on. 
he had been looking for connections between electricity and magnetism for several years. But expected that the compass would point away from the wire. Instead he found that the compass pointed in a circle around the wire. Above the wire it pointed perpendicular to the wire. Below the wire it also pointed in the perpendicular, but in the opposite direction. What were the implications of Ersted's discovery? The fact that moving charge in a wire could create a magnetic field created a great deal of excitement and enthusiasm in the scientific community. A week after hearing about Ours Ted's discovery, French physicist and mathematician André Marie Ampere, 1775 to 1836, gave a presentation at the French Academy of Sciences that extended Ours Ted's experiments and contained detailed analyses. A day later he found that two parallel current carrying wires would either attract or repel each other depending on the relative directions of the currents. Amper's greatest contribution, however, was the mathematical theory he created for electricity and magnetism. British chemist and physicist Michael Faraday's 1791-1867, philosophy led him to search for connections between phenomena like electricity, magnetism, and light. In 1821 he invented what is now called a homopolar motor. One end of a wire was suspended from a support so that it could swing in any direction. The other end of the wire contacted a pool of mercury. When Faraday put current through the wire the end in the mercury traced out a circle. The force that Faraday had observed wasn't formalized until 1891 and then by the Dutch physicist Hendrik Antoon Lorentz, 1853-1928. This force, called the Lorentz force law, is proportional to the current through the wire, the magnetic field, and the length of the wire. The force, which is perpendicular to both the current and the magnetic field, is strongest when the current and field are at right angles. This force is the basis of motors and many other applications. When Faraday published his results he failed to give credit to two other important scientists and he was given assignments to work in other fields. Nevertheless he continued to do experiments on the effects of magnetic fields. For example, he found that when dense glass was put in a magnetic field, the direction of polarization of light going through the glass was rotated. He spent 10 years searching for ways to create a current from a magnetic field. Finally, in 1831 he tried changing the magnetic field and made the crucial Discovery that an electric current is produced by a changing magnetic field. The current, a flow of charges, is produced by an electric field exerting forces on the charges. Faraday went on to invent the dynamo, an early electric generator. The American high school physics teacher Joseph Henry. 1797 to 1878, made the discovery at almost the same time.
What were the implications of Ersted's discovery? The fact that moving charge in a wire could create a magnetic field created a great deal of excitement and enthusiasm in the scientific community. A week after hearing about Ours Ted's discovery, French physicist and mathematician André Marie Ampere, 1775 to 1836, gave a presentation at the French Academy of Sciences that extended Ours Ted's experiments and contained detailed analyses. A day later he found that two parallel current carrying wires would either attract or repel each other depending on the relative directions of the currents. Amper's greatest contribution, however, was the mathematical theory he created for electricity and magnetism. British chemist and physicist Michael Faraday's 1791 to 1867, philosophy led him to search for connections between phenomena like electricity, magnetism, and light. In 1821 he invented what is now called a homopolar motor. One end of a wire was suspended from a support so that it could swing in any direction. The other end of the wire contacted a pool of mercury. When Faraday put current through the wire the end in the mercury traced out a circle. The force that Faraday had observed wasn't formalized until 1891 and then by the Dutch physicist Hendrik Antoon Lorentz, 1853-1928. This force, called the Lorentz force law, is proportional to the current through the wire, the magnetic field, and the length of the wire. The force, which is perpendicular to both the current and the magnetic field, is strongest when the current and field are at right angles. This force is the basis of motors and many other applications. When Faraday published his results he failed to give credit to two other important scientists and he was given assignments to work in other fields. Nevertheless he continued to do experiments on the effects of magnetic fields. For example, he found that when dense glass was put in a magnetic field, the direction of polarization of light going through the glass was rotated. He spent 10 years searching for ways to create a current from a magnetic field. Finally, in 1831 he tried changing the magnetic field and made the crucial discovery that an electric current is produced by a changing magnetic field. The current a flow of charges, is produced by an electric field exerting forces on the charges. Faraday went on to invent the dynamo, an early electric generator. The American high school physics teacher Joseph Henry. 1797 to 1878, made the discovery at almost the same time. What discovery did James Clerk Maxwell make that depended on the work of Ersted, Faraday, and Ampere? In an earlier chapter we have seen that charges create electric fields. In this chapter we have seen that moving charges, that is, currents create magnetic fields and that changing magnetic fields produce electric fields. 
In the 1860s Scottish physicist James Clerk Maxwell, 1831-1879, added a crucial additional connection. Changing electric fields can produce magnetic fields. With that idea Maxwell recognized that these relationships meant that electric and magnetic fields could move through space. The fields move through space as transverse waves that are perpendicular to each other. Maxwell calculated the speed and found that it was equal to the speed of light. He published his results in 1864 and a textbook on electromagnetism in 1873. In 1881 Oliver Habeside wrote Maxwell's famous four equations in the form they are used today. In 1888 Heinrich Hertz, 1857-1894, transmit electromagnetic waves across his laboratory. Confirming Maxwell's theoretical work. What discovery did James Clerk Maxwell make that depended on the work of Ersted, Faraday, and Ampere? In an earlier chapter we have seen that charges create electric fields. In this chapter we have seen that moving charges, that is, currents. Create magnetic fields and that changing magnetic fields produce electric fields. In the 1860s Scottish physicist James Clerk Maxwell, 1831-1879, added a crucial additional connection. Changing electric fields can produce magnetic fields. With that idea Maxwell recognized that these relationships meant that electric and magnetic fields could move through space. The fields move through space as transverse waves that are perpendicular to each other. Maxwell calculated the speed and found that it was equal to the speed of light. He published his results in 1864 and a textbook on electromagnetism in 1873. In 1881 Oliver Habeside wrote Maxwell's famous four equations in the form they are used today. In 1888 Heinrich Hertz, 1857-1894, transmit electromagnetic waves across his laboratory. Confirming Maxwell's theoretical work. How much energy is contained in a lightning flash? An average lightning bolt transfers about 5 coulombs of charge and about half a billion joules of energy. The transfer takes about 30 millionth of a second and the Electrical power in a bolt can be as large as 1,000 billion watts. What is the Van de Graaff generator? Named after its American creator, Robert Jemison Van de Graaff, 1901 to 1967. The Van de Graaff generator has been the highlight of many electric demonstrations in both physics classrooms and museums around the world. The device, created in 1931, consists of a hollow metal sphere that stands on an insulated plastic tube. Inside the tube is a rubber belt that moves vertically from the base of the generator to the metal sphere. 
A metal comb attached to the base almost touches the belt. The rubber belt carries negative charges from the comb up the tube and into the metal sphere. There, a second metal comb captures the charges. They repel each other and spread over the exterior surface of the metal sphere. As more and more charge is carried upward, it takes more and more energy from the motor to move them up because of the repulsive force of the charges already there. The energy of the charges can reach up to a million joules per coulomb of charge. That is up to 1 million volts. How can you construct your own Leiden jar? You can use either a glass or plastic container that has a tight fitting cap. Use a small nail to make a hole in the center of the cap. Straighten a paper clip and push it through the hole. Make sure the end of the clip reaches the bottom of the jar. Cover the outside of the jar with aluminium foil and fill the jar about two thirds full of water. Make sure that the jar cap is dry. Now rub a plastic pen with wool and touch the pen to the paper clip. Repeat the rubbing and touching several times. Then touch the clip with your finger. You should feel a very tiny shock. The jar has stored the charge that you gave the pen when you rubbed it. What is the danger of short circuits in a home? As described above, if there is only a tiny amount of resistance in a circuit the current is very large and the wires get extremely hot. If, for example, the insulation on the wires in an appliance fails and the wires touch each other, the resistance drops and current rises. The wires, including those in the walls, can get hot enough to cause a fire. Household circuits are protected by fuses or circuit breakers. They are designed to open when current exceeds a predetermined limit. With the circuit now open, current stops and the wires will cool. Are holiday lights in series or parallel circuits? M. Many years ago holiday lights used large bulbs designed to work on 120 volts. Those strings were wired in parallel. Today holiday lights are wired in series so that the tiny bulbs have only low voltages across them. If a lamp burns out because the filament fails, there will be no current through the string. But, there will be 120 volts across the failed bulb. The bulb has a wire touching the two thick wires that deliver current to the filament. The wire is covered with a thin insulating film. What happens when a magnet is cut in two pieces?
when a magnet is cut the atoms within the domains remain aligned. In almost every case the cut would be between two domains, leaving aligned domains in the two halves. If you cut a domain you would create two smaller domains, each with a north pole and a south pole. So no matter where you cut the result is two magnets, each with its own north and south pole. The more domains, the stronger the magnet. What happens to a series circuit if more bulbs are added? If more light bulbs or other resistors are placed in a series circuit, there is more resistance in the circuit. And so the current, and the brightness of the lamps would be reduced. What is a parallel circuit? A parallel circuit allows the charges to flow through different branches. For example, the wire from the battery would be connected to one terminal of each of three bulbs. The other terminals are connected together and to the negative terminal of the battery. The charges now have three separate paths through which they can flow. If one bulb burns out or is removed from the socket, that bulb would no longer light. But the current through the other two lamps would not change. They would continue to glow. What is an AC circuit? In an AC, or alternating current circuit, the polarity of the voltage source changes back and forth at a regular rate. In the United States one terminal of the source changes from positive to negative and back to positive 60 times each second. Therefore the flow of charge also alternates in direction 60 times. A second as the electrons in the circuit vibrate back and forth. An alternating current is usually found in wall outlets in buildings. Most of our electrical appliances run on alternating current. What is a series circuit? A series circuit consists of electrical devices such as resistors, batteries, and switches arranged in a single line. There is only one path for the charges to flow through. And if there is a break anywhere in the circuit, the current will drop to zero. What happens if you touch the Van de Graaff generator? If you place your hands on the upper sphere while the generator is charging it the electric charges accumulating on the sphere move onto your body as they are repelled by the other charges. When your body has enough charge your hair may stand up on. And because the electric charges on the hair repel each other. You won't be hurt because the current through your body is very small. 
Just don't touch anything or anyone else. What happens in a parallel circuit if more bulbs are added? In a parallel circuit the current goes through separate branches. If another branch is added with another bulb, the current has an additional path to take. But, the battery, or generator, produces a constant voltage. So the current through the original bulbs does not change, and neither does their brightness. What important contributions did Nikola Tesla and George Westinghouse make in the late 19th century? Nikola Tesla, 1856-1943, worked for Edison's company in Europe. Edison offered Tesla a large sum of money if he would invent an improved generator. When Tesla did, Edison refused to pay, saying he had been joking. Tesla quit. In 1884 George Westinghouse. 1846-1914, a prolific American inventor and businessman, formed the Westinghouse Electric Company. In 1884. Four years later he persuaded Tesla to join his company and purchased his patents from him. Westinghouse had improved a transformer invented in France. But Tesla's AC induction motor, invented in 1883, and three-phase generator were essential for Westinghouse's dream of transmitting electric energy efficiently over long distances. Does a compass sometimes point downward along with pointing north? For hundreds of years, navigators using compasses noticed that on occasion, the compass pointer would try to point downward in addition to pointing north. This phenomenon, which went unexplained for several hundred years, was observed by compass maker Robert Norman. He found when flying over the poles one end of the compass would point downward. He understood that the problem was that the pointer was attracted to the pole under the plane. By making the compass rotate in the vertical direction he made the first dip needle. Which of the three arrangements shown below would have the properties of a refrigerator magnet as described above? The top two wouldn't because both surfaces would act as a magnet. The top right hand arrangement would be a very weak magnet on both faces. Because the alternating poles would essentially cancel each other out. In the third drawing the sheets have been folded and then pressed together so that the poles are at only one surface. So only that surface would act like a magnet. The alternating N and S poles attract steel and stick to it. You can check this idea by taking two refrigerator magnets and holding the magnetic surfaces together. And then try sliding one over the other. You'll find that they skip as first N and S poles touch each other and attract. 
then the like poles try to touch each other but repel, making the magnets skip. What is the origin of Earth's magnetic field? The source of Earth's magnetic field is its core, made of iron, so hot that it is molten. It rotates at a slightly different rate than does Earth. And this difference creates what is called a dynamo effect, generating a magnetic field. Details of how the dynamo effect works are still a matter that is under investigation. How do the charged regions of clouds and the ground act as a giant capacitor? A capacitor consists of two conducting plates with opposite charge separated by an insulator. When a wire is connected between the two plates, a large electric current flows the charges rapidly from one plate to the other, neutralizing the capacitor. The charged regions of the clouds act as conducting plates while the air between them acts as the insulator. The same thing occurs between the lower section of the cloud and the ground. The air between these sections acts as the insulator but when the forces exerted by the charges on the air molecules are large enough, they can rip the electrons from the molecules. The result is a positively charged molecule, called an ion, and a free electron. The air is changed from an insulator to a conductor. The mobile electrons gain more energy, creating more and more ions and additional free electrons. When the electrons and ions combine again light is emitted. The tremendous amount of energy released rapidly heats the surrounding air, producing thunder. What were the implications of Ersted's discovery? The fact that moving charge in a wire could create a magnetic field created a great deal of excitement and enthusiasm in the scientific community. A week after hearing about Oer's Ted's discovery, French physicist and mathematician André Marie Ampere, 1775 to 1836, gave a presentation at the French Academy of Sciences that extended Oer's Ted's experiments and contained detailed analyses. A day later he found that two parallel current carrying wires would either attract or repel each other depending on the relative directions of the currents. Amper's greatest contribution, however, was the mathematical theory he created for electricity and magnetism. British chemist and physicist Michael Faraday's 1791-1867 philosophy led him to search for connections between phenomena like electricity, magnetism, and light. In 1821 he invented what is now called a homopolar motor. One end of a wire was suspended from a support so that it could swing in any direction. The other end of the wire contacted a pool of mercury. When Faraday put current through the wire the end in the mercury traced out a circle. 
the force that Faraday had observed wasn't formalized until 1891 and then by the Dutch physicist Hendrik Antoon Lorentz, 1853-1928. This force, called the Lorentz force law, is proportional to the current through the wire, the magnetic field, and the length of the wire. The force, which is perpendicular to both the current and the magnetic field, is strongest when the current and field are at right angles. This force is the basis of motors and many other applications. When Faraday published his results he failed to give credit to two other important scientists and he was given assignments to work in other fields. Nevertheless he continued to do experiments on the effects of magnetic fields. For example, he found that when dense glass was put in a magnetic field, the direction of polarization of light going through the glass was rotated. He spent 10 years searching for ways to create a current from a magnetic field. Finally, in 1831 he tried changing the magnetic field and made the crucial discovery that an electric current is produced by a changing magnetic field. The current, a flow of charges, is produced by an electric field exerting forces on the charges. Faraday went on to invent the dynamo, an early electric generator. The American high school physics teacher Joseph Henry 1797 to 1878, made the discovery at almost the same time. How are refrigerator magnets made? Examine a refrigerator magnet. It is flexible, feels like rubber, and only one surface is attracted to metals. It doesn't stick to a stainless steel door unless the stainless has been coated with steel. It's made of rubber that has been impregnated with ferrite particles and magnetized. Small pieces, each a dipole, are then pressed together under heat to bond them into one thin sheet that can be cut, folded, and bonded to other sheets. What is a DC circuit? In a DC, or direct current, Circuit charges travel only in one direction. The voltage source, a battery, or direct current power supply, has one positive and one negative terminal, so there is current in only one direction. How much charge is inside the sphere of a Van de Graaff generator? Zero. When negative charges leave the rubber belt, they move immediately to the outer surface of the sphere. Negative charges like to be as far away from each other as possible. So they move to the outer surface of the Van de Graaff generator's sphere. An old, damaged photograph of British physicist Michael Faraday. Who was the first to describe an electric force in terms of a field? He also invented the Faraday cage. 
which permits electric charges on the outer shell but not within the cage itself. What is lightning and how is it created? Lightning is an electrical discharge in the atmosphere, like a giant spark. There is still debate about the cause of the separation of charges needed to create the discharge. Atmospheric scientists believe that strong updrafts in the clouds sweep droplets of water upward, cooling them far below the freezing point. When the droplets collide with ice crystals the droplets become a soft mixture of water and ice. As a result of these collisions the ice crystals become slightly positively charged and the water slash ice mixture becomes negatively charged. The updrafts push the ice crystals up higher, creating a positively charged cloud top. The heavier water slash ice mixture falls, making the lower part of the clouds negatively charged. The ground under the cloud is charged by induction. The buildup of negative charges on the underside of a thundercloud attracts the positive charges in the ground. The negative charges are repelled further into the ground leaving a positively charged surface. Does lightning always strike the ground? Although most people think of lightning when it goes between earth and clouds. The most common type of lightning occurs inside and between thunder clouds. It is usually easier for lightning to jump between the clouds than it is for it to jump from the clouds to earth. As a result, only one quarter of all lightning strikes actually strike the ground. What happens if you get close to a charged Van de Graaff? The sphere on the Van de Graaff is a conductor surrounded by an insulator, the air. While there are strong forces on the negative charges on the sphere, they're not strong enough to break down the insulating properties of the air. If, however, you bring another object with less negative charge close to the generator the forces on the air molecules can become strong enough to rip them apart. Separating their negative electrons from the positive nuclei. A spark will jump. If that object is your finger, you'll feel a shock when the charges carried through the spark move through your body. While the shock can be painful, one produced by the kind of Van de Graaff in physics classrooms is not harmful. How is a compass made? A compass is a magnetized metallic pointer that can rotate about a low friction pivot point. Sometimes the pointer is placed in a container of liquid to dampen the movement of the pointer. The magnetic pointer aligns itself with the north-slash-south orientation of Earth's magnetic field. 
and the person using the compass can determine what direction he or she is headed by looking at the pointer. Why is AC preferred over DC? In the late 1880s Edison and Westinghouse battled over the relative merits of DC and AC power distribution systems. After the electric chair had been developed Edison attempted to name electrocution Westinghousing because it used AC, but he failed. The AC system was victorious because transformers could raise the voltage to thousands of volts for transmission, then lower it for use in homes and businesses. At the high voltages the current needed to transmit large amounts of power is reduced. And so is the energy lost to thermal energy because the heating of transmission wires depends on current and resistance. <laughs>